This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. I want to get right into it for you today. I want to show you the stats uh, from this past week. I just do single family homes because that's what I've always done on the radio show, and I didn't want this to be a comparison of one over the other. I didn't want to be, be apples and oranges. So we're just doing single family homes for uh, the purpose of maintaining consistency. This week, uh, we have currently available 6,437 single family homes here in Southern Nevada. Last week was 6,416. We've gone up by only 21. Now, the rest of these data points are all just the last seven days. Okay, in the last seven days, we put 673 single family homes in escrow. That's a really good number. Uh, last week was 603, which was also a good number, but it's up even over that uh, by 70. Uh, this last week, we closed 388 homes. The week prior was 319. That's up almost 70. Uh, 171 single-family homes were withdrawn from the market. So when you take that withdrawn number and you see that the number went up by 21, uh, you know, and the number that went into escrow, we had, we had a pretty significant amount of houses put on the market and only a few taken off. The median sold price this past week uh, was 314865 That's down about $5,000 from the week prior. And the median sold price per square foot is $168.94. That's down almost $3 from the week prior. And our median days on market was 38. That's up three days from the week prior. So what does all this mean? Okay, first of all, I've told you before, these weekly numbers here, they're, they're kind of, uh, it's too small a sample size to get overly excited about any one direction or another. And for that purpose, uh, we've decided to go ahead and do a, um, a more broad look. And so I'm gonna show you now what's been happening since this started. And what we've got is, um, this week we told you we had 6,437 homes in escrow. All the way back on March 26th, we had 5,655. So we're up about 800 from then. Um, in escrow this week, we put 673 homes. Back then, we put 448. You can see that number has it dipped a little while, and it's really coming back strong. It's been going up steady for the last four weeks. The number of closings, 388 this week. That's up nicely from last week, but down from the week prior. That keeps going up and down. That's kind of an interesting thing. Back then when we started, we closed, we still closed quite a few deals when we first got into this mess here. Uh, 567, 523. This week we closed 388. The withdrawals has been fairly steady over the last few weeks. It just goes up and down a little bit. The median price is kind of interesting. The median sold price is 314 now. When we started, it was 317. The sold price per square foot, 168.94. Back then it was 175. That's come down a little bit. And that's been a pretty steady decline in price per square foot, but it's not a dramatic decline, just a slight decline. We have seen the days on market go up a bit from 31 to 38. So, you know, interesting stats. I think, um, you know, they, they bring to light uh, the idea that, first of all, in my mind, our market's good, it's fine. Look, it's usually a lot busy, busier this time of year, uh, but we are busy and, and it's been good. So I'm, I'm very pleased. And you know, our, my, my group, we put three homes in escrow this week. So uh, we're doing good. We're, doing, um, we're seeing the market continue to, to move ahead. Um, and we've seen pricing just kind of hang there. It's not, it's not, we're not seeing any kind of a major dip or dive. I also found a couple of interesting articles in the paper this week. You know I like to share these uh, articles from the RJ. Um, one of them being, let me get right to the top of this one so you can see the, the headline. Casino reopening clues may come in a control board workshop on Tuesday. Um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be meeting on Tuesday to discuss reopening the casinos. Now, what the article goes on to say is, is that the control board will determine the how and the governor will say when. And that's what they came to the conclusion of. The casino control board is basically, they're going to be figuring out the methods and modes with which to reopen. And then the governor is going to say, yeah, go ahead and do it. Now, other casinos around the country have reopened um, in other states. Uh, they've put in rules such as no more than 50% capacity and things of that nature. I imagine we're going to see similar things here. Also, let me note to you, this is about McCarran, an important uh, element of our community here. McCarran, the portal which brings us all of our tourists, or most of our tourists, not all of them. Um, and they've uh, implemented a lot of safety instructions. They've got a whole campaign going on. Uh, say, you, know, you can see, don't roll the dice, stay six feet apart. Um, they've also, they, other cute little sayings, always split aces. I thought that was kind of cute. Always split aces, keep six feet apart. Um, they're, they're, they're using a program called Loss All In. 
And they're basically saying, look, you know, we want to be careful. We don't want anybody getting sick at the airport. So they're trying to demonstrate extreme caution, which I think will be good and will help us to attract more travelers to the valley. Uh, people, I think getting on airplanes is going to be a challenge for a lot of people right now. They're going to be, um, you, know, you know, I don't want to say uh, scared, but maybe it's just somewhat reluctant. Uh, but maybe once they see the proper protocols put into place, uh, they'll feel a lot more comfortable about doing that, and that'll increase our traffic. And that's what we need to do. We need to get traffic back. One of the things we talked about uh, coming into this week's program was I got an email uh, from uh, one of my colleagues, an accountant, and basically he said, uh, he, he was warning all of his uh, clients and saying, listen, guys, make sure that your property taxes are properly capped. They're capped at 3% for your owner-occupied homes here uh, in Nevada. Um, a number of years back, the state implemented a cap, and that's when our prices were going crazy. They were shooting up back in the mid-2000s. They were going up like crazy. Um, and so the, uh, the state uh, put in a cap so that your assessment could not go up any more than 3% per year. If it was an owner-occupied property, it was like five, it's like just under 5% per year. So my, this accountant friend of mine sent this email out to his colleagues and said, hey, make sure you're good. But he didn't tell us how. So I thought I might today show you how. How do you make sure you've got the proper cap on your property, that, that your property taxes aren't going to go up any more than 3% in your owner-occupied uh, properties? And I'm going to share that with you right now. If you go to brownblankfeld.com, you're going to end up seeing a website just like this. Uh, and at the top of the website, you're going to see a link called Important Links. Or it might say resources. We've, we've changed that back and forth. It might say resources and then important links. But you want to get to the important links page on our website. You click that. And what you're going to see on this page is all kinds of links related to our valley and real estate. You know, all the schools. If you want to find out what your school, uh, what school your house is zoned for, that's here. All the utilities are here. If you want to get a map, you want to, you want to get a, a zip code map or a, or a road map of Las Vegas, that's here. Uh, and then you've got other important links, including golf and climate and other things of that nature. But over here in the Clark County Resources, you've got one called Clark County Treasurer. You click on that and you end up at this page here where you can look up your property. So what you do here on this page is you enter in your tax ID number. Um, and, and with that tax ID number, um, with that tax ID number, it's going to spit out a report such as this. And it's going to say, and now I didn't want to spit out an actual report because I didn't want to favor any individual and I, and I wanted to try to keep it somewhat anonymous. So I've just printed one out, kind of marked out some of the data from it. But you can see this one, it's very important to note right here, you see that number three. That is the cap for this particular property. The tax cap increase percentage is three. This property is properly capped at 3% as an owner-occupied property. Now, if you go to your home, and you see this, you see 4.8. That's a property that's not owner-occupied. If yours is owner-occupied and you see 4.8, you're not capped properly. You need to reach out to the treasurer and say, hey, I need to fix this so I can have my 3% cap on my taxes. Um, and so, you'll, so that they'll understand. Now, I'm gonna go back up to this previous one so you can see the impact of this. Um, the taxes assessed for this one, for this particular, were $9,000, but, but they were reduced by $3,000, guys. That's what the cap does. It protects you from that $3,000 this year. So the actual tax bill was only $6,000. So it's important that you have that in place. And again, uh, what happened was, back in the mid-2000s, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Nevada State Legislature implemented and they put in this rule where you have an annual cap on your property taxes. Make sure you've got it. Go to our website or go directly to the treasurer's website and uh, confirm it. If you have any questions about it, reach out to me. I'll help you. Uh, maybe you don't know how to find your tax ID number. We can help you with that too. Please join us again next week as we keep you up to date on everything real estate here in Southern Nevada. Remember, send me any questions or ideas for next week's broadcast. Tune in every Thursday at 3. Also, please let your friends and family know to like our Facebook page and be reminded about our updates at LV Real Estate Radio. We'll catch you next week. Thanks again for joining us.